Tessa Thompson, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Trevor Noah. Um, let me start by congratulating you. You have the coolest face mask collection I have ever seen. You've got like crystals on some, you've got like, they've got bedazzles, they've got, how many face masks do you have? Um, I, I haven't counted. I have a growing collection and I started making them. I'll count to make it back to you, but I definitely have upwards of at least, I would say 25, easily 25. Cause I started making them. I like have been bedazzling N95s and yeah, I've perfected it. And my friend Gloria has made a bunch with me. You are as at home in major blockbusters, you know, like a Marvel franchise, whether it's Thor or Avengers, as you are in like the, the most intimate indie films, you know, Sorry to Bother You or, or, or any, anything that we've seen you in, it, it just feels like you're at home. I feel like your new film is, is no different. It's a, it's a departure from what we may see you in, but at the same time, it feels completely authentic to who you are. And before we get into the movie, I'd love to know how you pick these roles. I don't a couple things. I feel like I look for something that scares me. Is there something I have to learn or do or communicate that I'm frightened or mildly terrified that I cannot? I feel like that's exciting, uh, an exciting place of creation. And then I also think a lot about where have we not been? Where have we not seen uh, black people, people of color in certain spaces? Like how do we get us there? I think a lot about how have we not been seen in the past? Why uh -huh. don't we exist in the future enough? <laughs> um, and those those kind of things compel me into different genre pockets. Because sometimes if you change just who the protagonist is, that changes the aperture in a way that can be really political and interesting. It really is. I mean, Sylvie's Love is no different. Uh, w w when, I, when I first heard of the movie, I was like, okay, this is a movie that takes place in like the 1950s and it's probably gonna be about civil rights. Because I mean, that's when the civil rights movement was was taking shape. And, and it was it was a beautiful surprise because yes, it exists in that world, but it's a story of two people falling in love. It's love during one hot summer. And a part of it felt like it, like, like you were attracted to the story because of the music. I know that you love music. I know that you love jazz music. Tell me how important the music is in this story. Huge, because uh, for me, it was basically a love letter to music. And Eugene Ash, there's all these fantastic songs that were written into the script. So when I when the script was sent to me, that's what I did. I immediately, any time a song would come on, I I press play on the song and I would read the script through oh, wow. with that with that soundtrack. So it was really like an immersive sonic experience for me. And then you know, not for nothing, my favorite long, love song of all time is Nancy Wilson's "How Glad I Am." Nancy Wilson is like a big sort of touchstone in this film. Uh, so mu music is, is paramount for me. I use it in my work. I use it in my life. Like this whole quarantine has been a, just um, a lot of music. I will say what I really enjoyed in the film, or one of the things I enjoyed was Namdi's character. You know, you've got this big human being who is the softest, most romantic, just gentle. It, it like the paradox of, of, of the character was something that I didn't expect. Why do you think he was the perfect person to partner with in, 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 in telling the story. In general, I think what's exciting about these characters and feels kind of modern about them is they're trying to upend their own ideas of, of, of gender. For example, Sylvia is this career woman who says to this man in you know, the 60s, why don't you let me be the breadwinner so you can follow right. your dreams, you know? And I think it's particularly compelling to me at a time where I think we are still trying to upend our ideas around gender and, and be the fullest expression of ourselves and not feel boxed in by what society at large tells us we ought to be because of our gender presentation. So I found that really inspiring. And I think for Namdi, it's funny because he likes to think, he likes to pretend that it's just like, sublime acting, which of course it is. He spent a year learning how to play saxophone, but I also think he is a bit of a softie. And so <laughs> this role gave him the opportunity to access, to access that. And I, I hope his NFL brothers take a cue. What, 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 I, what I also appreciated in the movie was how your character, and you really portrayed this well, is how she, she's pushing against a world that is constantly telling her that she cannot be. And I felt like that's what Tessa Thompson does in, in real life. You know, you, you've been someone who's been really vocal about how Hollywood needs to change, how 
women need to be given opportunities to direct more films. First of all, yeah. do you think Hollywood is doing enough now that people are speaking up? And secondly, why do you think it's so important to have women at the helm of telling these stories? Um, something that I found really exciting about Sylvie's Love is inside of it, you see this young would-be producer who assumes that that's impossible for her and she is right. given an opportunity by another woman of color and I think certainly in my own trajectory I can trace every pivotal moment in my career to um, a person of color or a woman and in some cases both and I think that really points to the necessity that we need to be in those positions of power of hiring power and when we're there it can't be enough that we are there we have to make sure that that other folks can be in the room with us um, it's not enough to just be in proximity to power we have we also have to possess it and some of that has to do with making our own institutions and our you know our own places where we can flourish and I think that's something that I am seeing there's all of these friends of mine that are creating their own companies and doing it their own way and and really um, thinking not just about opportunity but about ownership and that to me is the most exciting thing that I see happening inside of this industry um, it will literally eventually change the face of Hollywood but in terms of inclusion that's not something that happens by mistake which is why right. I advocate for things like the four percent challenge you have to make it a mandate I think at the studio level um, and, you know, I, to me, that, that will be the real marker of change is when we can make those systemic changes that are, you know, written and actionable. Well, you're doing an amazing job. Um, I loved watching you in this film because, I don't know, it was just nice to see human beings loving each other during this time. Thank you. Isn't that nice? It is, right? It was just it was just like a wonderful feeling. It really was. I loved it. I loved the music. I loved the feel and the vibe. It was great to watch a period piece like this where it's like, I've never seen anything like this, or it's been an extremely long time. So um, thank you very much for your art, as always, and thank you for joining me on the show. Thanks so much for having me. It's always such a pleasure. Take care, Tessa. You too.